Hi everyone, I'm Emily Rubino. I'm the Director of Policy and Outreach at Peace Action New York State. At Peace Action New York State, we currently have 24 campus chapters who are working on a variety of peace and justice issues. And I think that in a time with so much chaos surrounding us, whether that be the climate crisis, the rise of right-wing authoritarian regimes, or the ongoing and impending wars that the US and its allies are engaged in, it's more important than ever to make sure that as young people, we're doing everything we can to speak out against this. Um, the best way that I've found to engage our chapters and other young people in this is by illustrating the clear connections between all of our struggles. The US military is considered the world's number one polluter. There's an inextricable link between militarism and the climate crisis, the same way that there's an inextricable link between the climate crisis and racism, between militarism and racism, and the list goes on. And I think that because all of these issues are so deeply entwined, um, it's important to make clear that by being any sort of activist, by working on any one of these issues, you're really working towards the more sustainable and equitable future that we're all envisioning. So our issues do not exist in silos, and we should be making sure that in our approaches, regardless of what we're working on, that we're being intentional about centering the voices of those most affected by our issues. So for example, when we're focusing on issues of peace and disarmament, our work really needs to be informed by and led by those most affected, which is namely Hibakusha, those who have been directly affected by nuclear bombs and nuclear testing, as well as victims of war and conflict, the most severely impacted being women, girls, and those in the LGBTQIA community. A term that I've learned recently um, nuclear colonialism also comes into play here. We didn't just test nuclear weapons on anyone indiscriminately. Um, we mined uranium, exposed people to radiation, and tested nuclear weapons on indigenous peoples in the United States and in the Marshall Islands, um, people who are really bearing the brunt of the US empire. And this concept extends out to other nuclear powers as well, who tested and developed weapons at the expense of indigenous communities as a product of their um, colonial occupation. So I think that it can certainly be overwhelming at times to stay focused on one topic or one goal, especially right now when it feels like every day there's a new piece of devastating news. But I think that the best thing that I can communicate and something I need to continue to remind myself of as well as the students that we work with um, and also hopefully all of you listening to this is that whatever it is whatever motivates you to take action um, you need to take it and go with it and by deciding to take action on whatever compels you most um, you're really helping where we need you in this fight so yeah I personally have been involved in organizing work since I was in college um, where I was involved in different social justice and racial justice coalitions. So by the time I was ready to graduate, I had also broadened my scope into looking at militarism more broadly, um, and including the impacts of US militarism in our foreign policy, um, which isn't really much of a leap when you talk about when you're going from racial justice to US foreign policy, because like literally the police in the United States use military grade weapons provided by the Pentagon. So once I realized that I could also be making an impact, not just domestically, but also more broadly, and I could be speaking out against the huge chunk of my tax dollar that's being put towards this war machine, um, that's kind of when I got more deeply involved in peace and disarmament activism. And, you know, there's a lot that I've learned being in these circles and dealing with this. Um, I think there's definitely some up, uphill battles that we need to face. Um, for one, I think that we really need to work on diversifying the peace movement um, in the US and from what I've observed abroad, the face of the peace movement and those in leadership tend to not look like me, right? They tend to be older, more likely a man, probably white. Um, so I think that it's really important that leadership starts to reflect those of us on the ground in the peace movement, those of us that are most affected by these issues, um, which I've already mentioned tend to be more women, people of color, queer folk. So I think that um, it's important that this starts 
being reflected in the leadership and that people who are most affected are given decision-making power. So, um, yeah, I'd say a challenge that I've faced time and time again as a young woman of color organizer and director of a small peace organization is the same issue that many young women of color, regardless of field or really young women um, or young people, regardless of what you're doing, is a questioning of legitimacy. Um, oh, you're just being naive. Oh, like you don't know what you're talking about, that kind of thing. And I think that something that works in my activism to try to push back against this is to really build trust and build coalitions with people who are going to take me seriously and consider me an equal partner at the table, someone with something to bring, experience, judgment, um, knowledge even. And I think that it's important to be intentional about the coalitions that you're building and the relationships that you're building and making sure that you're working with people who are already on the ground doing the work or who are not afraid to listen and adapt and won't be offended by you um, bringing up issues you may have or questions you may have about things, how things are being conducted. So I think um, that's something I've learned is just be really intentional about who you're working with and what coalitions you're building and who's in the room and who's not. Um, and, you know, on that note, I think that it's important that we respect and listen to the experience of those who have been doing this way before I was alive. Um, but I think we also need to start making sure that we're working with people who are willing to pass the torch or at least share the torch with us and um, pass wisdom on as opposed to kind of hoarding it um, with their knowledge and power. So yeah, those are just kind of some of my experiences and I hope this video is helpful. Um, thanks for having me. Bye.